current and conductivity. In this video, you'll learn about current, you'll learn about conductivity, but you'll also learn about conductors, insulators, resistors, and resistance. So uh, when you see the video pause sign, please do that and take great notes. Current. Current is simply the flow of charge. That flow is caused by an imbalance of charge that creates an electric force that moves free charges. Current is given the symbol I for intensity and is measured in amperes, capital A, for Andre Ampere. For example, if the current is 0.6 amperes, it is written as I equals 0.6A. Current is calculated by seeing how many charges go by in a certain amount of time. So remember that charge is given the symbol Q and time is T, so I simply is equal to Q divided by T. And I didn't put it here, but the unit would be in amperes. So current is measured in amperes. Well, what is an ampere? Well, an ampere was established before the proton and electron were discovered. And so it's an awful lot of charge flowing by in a certain amount of time. After determining the charge on an electron, the ampere was redefined as one coulomb per second. And if you recall, a coulomb is an awful lot of charge. 624, and then, wow, 15 more, uh, 16 more zeros after that. So that's a huge quantity of charge that flows by in one second. So an ampere is one coulomb per second. So we know a little bit about current now, but what does current flow through? Well, currents flow through materials called conductors. And conductors are materials that allow their outermost electron to be stripped away easily as long as it is replaced with another electron nearby. And if you recall, the uh, copper atom we saw with that electron way in its outermost shell uh, makes a great material uh, for as a conductor. Uh, conductors are used to allow the flow of charge like a pipe allows water to flow. Metals are good electrical conductors. Gold, silver, and copper are excellent conductors. Aluminum uh, is about 60% as conductive as copper. Conductors are great, but we need something to channel the direction that current flows. And so co conductors need insulators. Insulators are materials that do not allow current to flow. Insulators are used to keep charge from moving even when there is a significant electrical force. They are used around wires to keep current directed properly. Plastic, glass, rubber, air, and wood are good insulators. So we have the wires here which are good copper conductors in this case and we couldn't put all those wires together and run them alongside each other unless we separated them uh, we insulated them from one another so we have these insulators here that keep these copper wires from touching each other therefore they can each carry their own separate currents here are some insulators that you might see on telephone poles to uh, keep the uh, wires on the top telephone cables on the telephone poles from uh, being grounded through the uh, uh, telephone pole itself or the uh, um, power lines. And then electrical tape uh, is a good insulator as well. Well this is kind of like the story of the three little pigs in Cinderella and uh, where you had a good conductor and then you had a good insulator which is opposite and then you had something that was just in between which is resistance. So resistance is caused by materials that hold on to their outer electrons but will release them when there's enough electrical force. It takes work to remove an electron from a resistive uh, atom or molecule. Uh, resistance is used to control how much current flows like the brakes on a car controls a car's speed. Resistance is given the symbol R and is measured in ohms given the Greek letter omega here, after George Simon Ohm. For example, R equals 100 ohms. Resistance is created using carbon compounds. 
Resistance is provided by a device called a resistor. Resistors are devices that oppose current. They are used to slow or control the amount of current in a circuit. A circuit is a pathway that directs electrical current around to distribute it to various components that do work. Here's a circuit right down here we'll look at in a second. A resistor is given the following circuit symbol right here. It's a squiggly line, a zigzag line, showing that uh, there's a little bit of impedance uh, or opposition to uh, an easy way through this path. And resistance is given the symbol R, so R equals 20 ohms here. Um, here are various resistors in this particular type of a circuit called an amplifier circuit. There are other devices here called transistors. And here are some capacitors and a diode and a speaker. But anyway, for right now, the important thing is to look at these devices called resistors here. Here are various resistors of various amounts, and these are called color codes for those resistors that tell how much those, the resistance is for these particular ones. And here are some integrated circuits on this board as well. And I have a little bit more on resistance. Resistance depends on three things. The first is resistivity. I couldn't find the Greek letter rho in this font, so this is not P. It's actually the Greek letter rho right down here you can see. And rho is the resistivity. Uh, and that's the stickiness of the compound, uh, the, the atoms and molecules themselves, how, how much uh, the particular molecule holds on to its electrons. Um, the next is the area right here, the cross-sectional area, and, uh, um, and so it's kind of like a pipe with water. So the bigger the cross-sectional area, the easier it is, uh, the less resistive it actually is. Um, and then length, uh, obviously the, uh, the longer the um, stickiness exists, the, uh, the more resistance you're going to have. And so that's exactly what you get. This it would be the actual material, and this is our circuit symbol, remember, for a resistor. And there is our equation for resistance. Resistance is equal to the resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. Obviously, if it's more resistive, uh, then it's going to have more resistance. If it's longer, you have to travel through more stickiness, so it's going to be more resistance. But if you have more area that you can cross through, more uh, pathways, if you will, for the current to flow, the area here was going to decrease the, resist the overall resistance. Okay, so let's get back to current now. If you recall from the very beginning, we said that current is how much charge flows by in a certain amount of time. Now we're going to take a look at current since we know some of the parts here. Uh, we, if we have a battery, this is a cross-section of a battery, the battery is what produces the uh, potential difference or the voltage. So in other words, there's chemical reactions that separate the charge here between the anode and the cathode of the battery, this being the anode, and charge is stripped off of that through the chemical reactions. And so we have a bunch of negative excess charges. Well, those negative charges don't want to hang out together. They are going to repel from each other dramatically. And since now we have conductors here and here that will easily pass along their electrons without having taking much work to strip those electrons away, um, these good conductors can conduct electricity to the resistance here, to the resistor. And in the resistor here, there's, there's sticky parts to it, but the electrons will fight their way through because they are attracted to this positive side of the circuit. So here's our little circuit. <clears throat> and again, the conductors conduct this, these electrons easily. The resistance opposes them, but the, the force, the push and the pull of the battery is what still drives those electrons through this resistor. Once they get to the other side of the resistor, it's easy sailing again through this conductor to go back to the battery. And this is called a complete circuit then. And so uh, what we'll see in this is that uh, there's a certain amount of current that's going to flow by, a certain amount of charge rather that's going to flow by in a certain amount of time. And that's what we call current.
What we need to understand is these electrons don't necessarily flow super fast here or anywhere in the circuit. They're not flowing fast. It's just that there are so many of them in the conductor that are moving. There's so many of them that uh, collectively there's an awful lot of charge that goes by in a certain amount of time. So a little uh, look at current again now that we know about conductors and resistors. We didn't talk about the insulators because they would be around the wire here and they'd be around the wire there. But nevertheless, that is current, how much charge goes by in a certain amount of time. So you've learned about current, the flow of charge, how much charge goes by in a certain amount of time. And current needs something to go through, and those uh, what current goes through are uh, conductors that allow charge to move easily. Uh, what controls where the current goes isn't just the uh, conductors, but the insulators that guide current down those conductive paths and keep the current from flowing elsewhere. And they will be guided to devices that have resistance, which uh, oppose the flow of current, but allow charge to uh, flow. And that's where the work is really done in the circuit, is uh, where the resistance is. And so we're going to take these ideas and we're going to uh, learn a little bit more about circuits themselves and uh, chase electrons around these various paths. And Scratch's parting thought. Very nice, Scratch. And uh, do go use your potential to strive for continuous improvement.